Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? I hope you had a great 4th of July. This is Heidi St. John, and you've found me at my little corner of the internet. Welcome to the Off the Bench podcast. Today, I've got a very special friend on the show with me. Steve Lambert is here, and we're going to talk to all the homeschool moms who can see the end of the homeschool journey right in their sights. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, so hope you had a wonderful weekend with your families celebrating Independence Day. We certainly have a lot to be thankful for in this country, even in the midst of all the craziness that we are enduring as a nation. We still live in the most amazing nation on the face of the earth. For the last couple of podcasts, you guys see I've been wearing my American Mama shirt. For those of you who are joining us on YouTube and Rumble, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I want to remind you, because I keep forgetting Don't forget to click subscribe and subscribe to this podcast. You can do it wherever podcasts are available. You can do it at Rumble now and at YouTube. Uh, We're excited to be bringing this to you in video format as well. Well, without without, uh, any more uh, wasting time, I want to introduce Steve Lambert to you. Steve is a dear friend of mine. He's been on the show many times. And one of my very first conversations with Steve and his lovely wife, Jane, had to do with a workshop that he was teaching at a homeschool convention where we were both speaking. And he was talking about developing an exit strategy so that when moms get to the end of their homeschool journey, they don't fall apart in a million pieces and wonder what they're what they're going to do now with all their extra time. And he had such good wisdom and such wonderful insight into uh, just loving his wife well and making sure that when they were done homeschooling, she still had a purpose and something that she was excited about doing. And he has absolutely done that in his own family. And I'm excited to talk about this with him today. Hey, my friend, welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you, Heidi. It's always great to be here. Well, you're not in Kansas City. No, no, we're, we're vacationing at the moment in Michigan. You fled, you fled the heat. We fled the heat. We (laughs) went up here to Lake Michigan where it's about 74 degrees every day. And we celebrated, uh, the fourth yesterday. Um, I think the estimate, they said that this year's 4th of July cost $10.18 more than last year's 4th of July, but I think it was closer to $30 more for us. So I don't know who's doing those numbers, but. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. I mean, I just got back. I think I was on the phone with you guys the other day and I went to Costco and I'm telling you what, like a bag of chicken wings. That would normally be my daughter Sailor loves those um, buffalo chicken wings. So I try oh, to get them at Costco yeah. so she can throw them in the air fryer. I'm telling you what, it was $24 for, I didn't even buy it. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do it. Like a bag that would normally cost me, you know, $13.50. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm showing my age, which is easy to do as old as I am. But when Jane and I were in college, you could go to KFC and wings were 10 cents each or 12 for a dollar. Yeah. And now they're like a buck and a half or two bucks a piece. So, yeah. 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 Of yeah that was it's like 140 years ago. So, that, <laughs> that accounts for something. <laughs> well, the way that gas prices are skyrocketing and inflation skyrocketing, I guess the the clock can do the same thing. So, uh yeah, exactly. it all it all works out. So, you and I've had this conversation before and believe it or not, Steve, I I can see the end of my homeschool journey now. When I first met you, it was nowhere in sight. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it over hills and vale or anything. Uh, but it's in sight for me now. Yeah, you had six and one in diapers, and now you have seven and only got what two two left at home. Yeah, and the youngest of, is what eleven or twelve. She's almost twelve, so she'll be in junior high this year. But yeah. our uh, our second youngest is a senior in high school, so and she's essentially done. I mean, we've worked. She's she has worked very diligently to get a lot of her stuff done in advance. So really, she doesn't have a lot to do for her senior year. But uh, I can see the end coming up. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly the years go. The days are long, but the years go by so quickly. They really do. And the mom who's listening to this right now, who's got you know five kids and her oldest is eight, can't possibly fathom no. how quickly. No. Uh, it actually goes by, but you have a really beautiful message, uh, and I think it reflects just a love that you have for your wife Jane, and to see her flourish uh, even after the homeschool years. But years ago, I heard you teaching on this, and I'm kind of curious to as to why it was something that the Lord laid on your heart to talk to homeschool moms about. Because we we talk to homeschool moms about you know getting in, engaged in the homeschooling you know, revving them up, encouraging them, 
you know, filling them with with hope and and vision. But nobody ever really talks about what it looks like when that last homeschool kid uh, leaves your home. No, that's exactly right. And that day's coming faster than any of us can possibly imagine. Uh, even if you're just starting on the journey, those years go by so quickly. And the the interesting part is that homeschooling is such an all-consuming task. I mean, but apart from managing a household and managing, you know, maybe a little side side gig that you got going on with some podcasting or something, and then managing your marriage and making keeping that as a priority. But homeschooling is a is a hobby. It's a vocation. It's a calling. It's a ministry. It's a purpose. It's the first thing you think of in the morning when you wake up. It's the last thing you think of when you fall asleep at night. And I began to learn as my peers um, got to the empty nest years, even those who weren't homeschooling, that when that last one walks out the door, uh, it's like uh, a real slap in the face for every mom. And, you know, we've, you've spent your, your life preparing for that day to trying to equip your kids to be self-sufficient and go out into the world right. and make their way. But when it happens, it's a shock. Yeah. But if it's a shock for any home, any mom, it's like getting hit head on by a train for a homeschool mom, because everything that's been the center focal point of your life for the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years comes to a screeching halt literally overnight yeah. and you wake up and I, I've told men often, I said, you know, if you, if you don't have a plan and if you haven't helped your wife develop an exit strategy, you're going to wake up next to a very unhappy woman. Mm -hmm. There'll be some time of celebration, mm -hmm. but her purpose and her daily mission and her ministry suddenly comes to a screeching halt and then, and, um, you need to have a plan to make that transition graciously yeah. and gracefully. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of your wife and your marriage. Well, and and the truth is, this is something we don't often talk about in homeschool circles. You know, I, I, I wish it was uh, talked about more often. But you and I, over the years, because I've been out now on the homeschool circuit speaking for about 17 years, and you've been doing it for a long, a longer, lot longer than me. And we now have stories. We could sit here for a long time and talk about friends that we have that have gone through this and really hit a wall and the depression is real. The, the sadness uh, yep. is, is real. And I think that's something uh, to talk about, but you have, and, and I love this kind of a, a uh, an exit strategy. It really is the right, the right terminology to help these moms and help husbands really right. prepare their wives for a life after homeschooling. So what's the first thing that you always that you always say when you're talking about this with uh with men and their wives? Well, we tend to think that this is this is the sum total of our life, but Jane and I finished the homeschooling journey uh so I'm think trying to think 25 years ago. Yeah. So we've already had 25 post homeschooling years. And if the Lord tarries, we might have another 10 or 15. And so there is a huge chunk of life for most people after homeschooling is over. And the thing that I, I encourage husbands to do is to begin to talk to their wives about finding something that excites them, something that they're looking forward to doing, and begin to rehearse those things in those latter homeschooling years. And so there needs to be time in the week uh, and a few dollars in the budget for mom to to taste and sample some different things. Maybe try your hand at, at watercolor painting or try volunteering at a, a senior center or try working in the school library or try your hand with a pottery wheel or writing short stories or poetry or gardening or whatever it is um, so that she begins to develop some sort of a vision for herself mm -hmm. uh, for the next quarter century or half century after homeschooling is over. Yeah. And that's the time to be doing that is when your oldest, you know, when your youngest is in middle school and not the weekend after the last one leaves for school or college or, or for a career. Yeah, it's true. And I, and I think uh, there's an, an important aspect, you know, Titus talks a lot about the importance of women mentoring other women. And I, I love it when these moms who have done, finished their race, finished their homeschooling race. And Jane is certainly a great example of this, right? Your wife is certainly a wonderful example. And so are you, you guys are long since uh, done homeschooling your kids. And in fact, most of your grandkids now come into the end of their homeschool journey. Yeah. Um, but you're still out there encouraging homeschool moms. And so it, it's, this is not to say, hey, you have to get out of homeschooling. It might mean 
Oh, not at all. Yeah, that you shift your focus and you become a mentor to other men, other women. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Heidi. It's so important. And the Bible is clear on that. And if you've anywhere on the journey of homeschooling, I can assure you that if you're doing it well, um, almost without exception, you had a mentor come along yep. maybe in the first few months or maybe in your second or third year and you were kind of floundering and struggling and an older mom came along and said, look, take an easy, take a deep breath. Here's what'll work. You know, this is a marathon. It's not a race. Yep. It's not a sprint. You can do this and you don't have to have all your ducks in order every day and you're going to have a bad week here or a bad month there. But in the end, tutorial education is efficient. Your kids are going to do fine. If God's called you to this, he's sufficient. Mm. Take a deep breath. And that's the breath of life to so many homeschool moms is because somebody who's been there and done that, somebody who's been to the end of the track and come back and said, you know what? There's life after homeschooling. You can do this. You're not going to be ashamed or embarrassed when your kids grow up. And I love it when homeschool moms spend, invest their time mentoring as well. So having a purpose and a passion beyond homeschooling is is critical, I think. And if part of that purpose and passion is mentoring young homeschool moms, I don't know anything that you could do that's probably any more rewarding or important because the world is leaning against the concept of homeschooling mm. because that defies the whole indoctrination concept that's happening in our public education right now. And so, you know, everybody's there to tell you, you'll never succeed at this. You're, these kids are going to be an embarrassment. You'll never be able to do this. You need to get them back in school properly and you need to do all this and that and the other. And every mom needs an anchor of somebody who's been there and said, you know what? You'll be fine. You can do this. Yeah, it's so important. And uh, you guys have done such an amazing job. We're going to break for commercial and I'll be right back. So, Steve, right before the break, you were mentioning that it was it's just important for moms to consider at least and dads too right to consider how we can pour into the next generation because the fight for freedom in education in this country is just getting started so we're watching a whole new generation right homeschooling is up upwards of 60% right now which is insane nobody ever thought that that would happen but then covid hit mm -hmm. and people finally got to see what was happening inside the public schools but this puts an incredible uh, uh, opportunity, a burden of opportunity, really, on a generation of moms and dads who are coming to the end of their homeschool journey and might have thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to drift out of it. But their voices are needed. Uh, how, what are some ways? Because you and Jane have really modeled this with your lives, and I would say, you know, people have heard me talk about you probably a thousand times on the show over the last uh, eight or nine years. But you guys had a tremendous influence in my life and in the lives of, of our children and certainly in the life of my husband and uh, consequently a tremendous impact in our marriage. And I don't think that it can be understated the value of mentorship, whether it's marriage and whether it's, and that also, you, that helps this, this mom. She's looking ahead. So while you might be homeschooling your last couple of children, I know that that's kind of what happened to me. I started writing books. I mean, I'm assuming that when Sydney and Sailor our youngest leaves our home at the rate I'm going, I'm not going to skip a beat. I'm going to keep right on doing what I've been doing. And that's kind of what you're, that's what you're alluding to is that when your last child leaves, sure. you don't trip and fall and are, and are discouraged and stumble, but you kind of move seamlessly into the next season of your life rather than go through this mourning period and this period of trying to find your identity again. Yeah. If there's one homeschool mom on planet earth that I don't need to encourage to get off the bench and find something to do with their life after the youngest leaves is probably you. Uh, you said you have like nine fires burning day and night as it is. So maybe by then you'll be running for the white house or who knows what, but who knows? But yeah. Who knows? I, you, you never cease to amaze Jane and I with the things that you managed to take on and, and, and pull off with grace and, and, looks you make it all look easy mm. <clears throat> but i've heard so many parents uh young young couples over the years lament the fact that you know they've seen older couples that they look to for mentoring or direction and when they finished and their nest was emptied that that's it they're done yeah. they have no more thoughts about homeschooling and they take off and travel the world or move move to their vacation home or whatever in mentoring i mean whether you're a man or a woman I don't know that there's anything more 
empowering than to have somebody that you respect come alongside and say, I see you. Yes. I hear you. Yep. I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. This is going to turn out okay. You can do this. I know you can. I believe in you. Father, uh, men long to hear that from their father, and very few of us ever do. Mm-hmm. Daughters long to hear it from their mom and their dad, and seldom do they get to hear it the way it needs to be expressed. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes uh, just understanding that and coming back when you've been through an experience, whatever that is, but, but and we're, today we're talking about homeschooling and drawing alongside. Jane and I spent uh, over the weekend uh, about four or five hours with a young homeschool couple. They've got six kids. Their oldest is 13 and they're right in the middle of it. The youngest is two. And she texted us this morning and just said, thank you so much for the encouragement this weekend. Yeah. And it was, it was partly intentional and partly just a byproduct of conversation. But she said, you know, I came away from our evening together thinking, you know what, I can do this. And everybody needs to hear that. And so, yeah, mentoring, tremendously valuable. Mm -hmm. And people don't need to overthink it. You know, one of the things that I uh, appreciated so much I remember one day calling you guys and, you know, I think Savannah was going into high school. So our oldest daughter heading into high school. So this was, oh my goodness, a long time ago. So this Savannah's in her thirties now, for goodness sake, just had her fourth baby. Crazy. Uh, it is crazy. It's crazy. Steve, what's going on, man? We're getting old. I don't know what's going like on. 14 when I met her. I know it. I know it. And I remember just uh, sort of panicking, you know, here's Savannah's going to go into high school and I'm thinking, oh my word, you know, I, I never planned on homeschooling and here I am doing it. And now right. I've got a daughter going into high school and I called you guys up on the phone and I just remember, I'll never forget as long as I live, you were like, well, what would you do if she was in the fifth grade? And I was like, what? You know, you're trying to get me to think. And you're just like, you would just do the next thing. You would do the next thing. So what's the next thing? So you just finished eighth grade. Now you're going to ninth grade. So what did you study last year? So what are you going to do this year? And it just calmed me down and it and helped me realize that A, I was panicking about something I didn't need to panic about. Right. And that it was going to be okay. And I think that's the message I keep hearing from you over and over again. Just, you know, the importance of of telling these moms it's going to be okay. And in fact, you're kind of doing it again uh, to the moms who are coming to the end of their homeschool journey. And you're saying, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And God still has a purpose for you. You know, none of us, I think, um, are equipped to homeschool in the natural. Mm. Uh, the more professional education and equipping you have, probably the more things you have to unlearn before you begin to become successful at homeschooling. Yep. Uh, and if it doesn't really matter whether you have a doctorate in education or whether you dropped out of high school in 10th grade, uh, in the end, we all find ourselves really at the mercy of, of God, mm. that one who gave us those children, who loves those children, who knows those children, who will know them for eternity and has known them in eternity past. Mm cares more about them than you'll ever care, knows more about them than you'll ever know. And he has a purpose in mind for you and your kids to build a relationship in your marriage, to build a relationship in your family, to help you deal. You and I have talked about that on this podcast before, about God's kind of the ultimate multitasker. And homeschooling has a unique way of making adults grow up, not only learning a little history and a little geography that they may have missed out on, but more importantly, learning to deal with some of their stuff and some of their eccentricities and sin natures and selfishness and things because suddenly we have living witnesses looking at us all day. So I'm saying, mama, why are you always, you know, so angry or why do you always wait till the last minute? So that process of realizing at the end of the, at the end of the day, you know what? I was totally ill-equipped to do this. I was terrified when I began, but God was sufficient Mm. and I'm not embarrassed and I'm not humiliated and I'm proud of what we accomplished together and I'm grateful to the Lord and my kids are doing great. And people just need to hear that. Yeah. They need to hear people who've been there and done that say, you know, and I, Jane and I have talked about this for years. And I said, you know, of all the things that I understand about the nature of God and theology and whatever, um, the, to me, one of the most extraordinary things is that God knows me intimately. And he knows my kids intimately. And if I was him, I wouldn't let me anywhere near my kids. <laughs> I'm a jerk. And he knows all my jerkiness. Yeah. You know, uh, but he invites us to, to give birth to those children, to raise them, to nurture them, to love them. And then 
us, most astounding of all, invites us to teach them and begin to take responsibility for their preparation for this life about what's right and what's wrong and what's true and what's false and how to, uh, you know, how to discern and, and sift their way through all the lies and the chaos that our culture is throwing our way. And that's a sobering responsibility. But at the end, you look back and you go, you know what? The Lord was faithful. Mm. And people need to hear that. Yeah. And that faithfulness really does carry into uh, the next season, you know, the next season for homeschooling. I think different, obviously, for somebody like me that had seven children. You know, my my uh, time in the homeschool world has very, has been very much extended. In fact, I ran into a young mom in Costco the other day. And she goes, I'm pretty sure I went to the homeschool co-op with your daughter, Savannah. And do you still have kids at home? I'm like, yep, I do. <laughs> she was like, wow, you know. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter remains that I think your life and Jane's life certainly uh, has shown this, that God's faithfulness extends to every season and that his calls for all of it. Uh, really quickly, I, want, I was hoping you'd share kind of the story about sort of helping Jane uh, turn her attention, sort of what got you percolating as you watched Jane, because she such a great homeschool mom. And she actually, our kids love to be around Jane. She's like the Pied Piper of homeschool <laughs> moms, right? She, she finds, you know, there's a clover out in the field or she's going to want to teach the kids how to paint. Because whenever we come to visit you guys, wherever you are, whether you're in Michigan or Kansas City, Jane will always, it's just in her to teach. Yeah. She's a teacher. But you saw the, those years of her actively teaching coming to an end and uh, I know that it it kind of burdened your heart because you wanted to see her continue on with joy. Uh, for the dads, especially that are listening, what was it that kind of percolated your your got your heart percolating toward the next season? Well, I could I could see the handwriting on the wall, and I could see that you know we didn't make a career out of homeschooling like you and Jay have done, but but we were in it for a good long while, and uh, um, I could see the the fear etched on her face as our youngest was in high school years and the end was drawing near. And so I began to encourage her. She's a good, she's a great communicator, author, um, and, and an encourager for homeschool moms. And so I began to encourage her to write down some lesson plans for some of the younger homeschool moms around her to kind of teach them the way she'd come to teach our children, which involved reading great books together and, and using those as a springboard to learn about history and geography and so forth. And so she did. She wrote a series of lesson plans for children's books and gave them to friends. And then friends of friends asked for copies. And so we eventually published a few of them in a little spiral book for, uh, I think we printed 100 copies. And I honestly thought that when we died, the kids would find the 94 copies still left in our <laughs> attic and throw them away. Yeah. But they sold in one weekend when we went to a homeschool convention. And so we printed several hundred more. And now we are now 28 years down the line. Uh, well over 100,000 mothers have used the materials that Jane has written. Um, our daughters have written some additional materials to supplement that. And now somewhere, but we don't know the number, but somewhere in excess of 600,000 children have used and benefited from, from me encouraging Jane and Jane's willingness to sit down in her fright, in her anxiety, in her uncertainty, uh, in her wondering if she could do it and putting down on paper, the same kind of mentoring that she'd been doing one-on-one -on -one with a handful of younger moms around her. And let me add, too, that, you know, we're talking about an exit strategy. We're talking about life after homeschooling, and, and that's the subject today. But you don't have to be through yet. Right. You know, if you've been doing this for four years, you are light years ahead of the mama who's planning on starting in September. 100%. And so you can begin that mentoring journey today. Uh by pulling some of those young moms under your wing and gathering them around and just inviting them to your house for coffee one evening a month and saying, so what's going on? Tell me what you're, you know, yeah. what you're going through. And they're going to have the same questions you had four years ago, but now you have the answers to those. And then you can get with somebody who's four years ahead of you and ask your questions. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's an illustration of how God teaches us to love uh, the people around us. And there's yep. no one that I know and I mean, there's, there's no one that I know that does it better than you and Jane in the way that you pour into the lives of, of the people who are around you and just encourage them, hey, don't give up, keep going. Uh, yep. The best is yet to come. And I think it moves people from one, one sphere uh, of influence and from one season uh, into the next. 
So uh, you didn't mention it, but that that little those scribblings that Jane wrote down all those years ago turned out to be a publishing company that you guys own now called Five in a Row. Right. And uh, people can find out where can they find out more about uh, about that? They can go to our website. It's uh, all spelled out like one word: f i v e i n a r o w dot com, five in a row dot com, and they can can learn more about it there. They can also find us on Facebook. And I think we're even on Instagram. I don't know. I don't oh understand all. Oh my goodness! You're on Instagram so, too. My goodness! Next thing you know, we're going to be I making TikTok it. videos. <laughs> Lord help us. <laughs> Lord help us. Steve Lambert, you are a national treasure and one of the dearest people in my life. Thank you so much for coming on the show and giving us a little bit of your wisdom. I appreciate it. You're always so kind, and as much as I speak into your life and Jay's life, you guys speak into ours. You always encourage me. Make me sit up a little taller and a little prouder. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. We appreciate you guys. For more information on uh, five in a row, you can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash podcast, scroll down to the show notes, and I will link back to it in the show notes today. I hope that this interview with my friend Steve Lambert has encouraged you and spurred you on to recognize that God has a calling on you in every season of life. And so if you're coming to the end of your homeschool journey, be encouraged because God's only just getting started with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to this show and share it with your friends. We appreciate your listening and sharing the show of the Off the Bench podcast. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture.